project, uh, the bridge that is connecting Dongo, uh, Mombasa to Kuala, uh, coming through to Likoni, is, is almost complete. And uh, as soon as I'm approved, I am under a very strict instruction to get the huge pipeline of investors who are waiting to get in Dongo Kundu, because we have to get Dongo Kundu right. Dongo Kundu has got potential to take off faster than even Naivasha and all, and all, and all those other, other areas. But uh, you address the issue of uh, why companies are relocating or why Kenya is not attractive for uh, for, for manufacturing and why, you know, first of all, yes, we do have a problem of uh, our taxation regime and taxation policy. Uh, and, and, and we have committed ourselves to sit down as a government to look at uh, what we can be able to do. Because our current policy, if you look at areas like tea, is actually incentivizing uh, not manufacturing, not, not value addition. It is much easier and much more profitable to export tea that which is not processed. So uh, just tomorrow, uh, the president is expected to uh, outline our, our manufacturing agenda for the next uh, 10 years uh, in a public event. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I would just say that uh, the issue of if you want to manufacture in Kenya, you are going to find a friend in the government of Kenya. If you want to make Kenya a dumping ground for goods from all over, then you are going to be in for a very rough time. So this is a discussion of how do we use our taxation policy to ensure that we, we remain we remain competitive. Of course, one of the things we are offering uh, and we are having that discussion with the, with KRA is that us as a Ministry of uh, Trade we are going, uh, and Manufacturing and, and Investment, we are going to be at the forefront of helping to expand the tax base and to help in the uh, in rationalizing and making efficient uh, policies of how to collect tax. In return, we expect that once we increase our tax revenue, and we are going to do that because we want to embark on a system of voluntary tax payment by our business community. The, the culture of uh, weaponizing our, our KRA is over. Instead of weaponizing KRA, we are working to ensure that our business community voluntarily, through an efficient tax system, you know, they pay taxes. In, in, in return, we'll be asking that some of the areas where we can be able to reduce our taxes uh, the, to, to spur manufacturing, then we can do that. Of course, and I want uh, members to, to have indulgence of members in this area. We are bound by the East African community, uh, the common external tariff. So what we do still is, you know, our hands are sort of tied by, by the EAC protocol and more significant by COMESA. Because we are, we COMESA goods from COMESA countries like Egypt, which have got much lower cost of production. They, they are supposed to, they can enter into this market uh, duty free within the COMESA setup. So uh, I am cognizant of that and I'm aware that we have to look at those factors which are making uh, goods, especially from countries like Egypt, to be more competitive. Nowadays, we are even complaining about about Uganda. You know, I, I think if our grandfathers wake up, they will be shocked how can Kenya start complaining about about Uganda, what, what happened. Uh, I was in Uganda the other day and I was talking to the trade minister of Uganda about eggs. I come from a county that is uh, known for exporting, uh, for, for producing eggs, Kembo County. And we told him, look, our farmers are complaining that because of your eggs, and this also answers to a question by Honorable Mary Masi, that we are not getting a market for eggs because of France from Uganda. And the Minister of Trade of Uganda told me something very profound. Every week, Uganda imports one million day-old chicks from Kenya. One million. So we are very good in producing day-old chicks. So these chicks go to Uganda, they become mature, they lay eggs, and then we refuse the eggs. And he was asking me, how can you refuse the eggs from your own chicken? <laughs> because they are, they are coming from us. And the answer is very simple. It's about our cost of production. That is why sometimes when I, I get surprised about people who are uh, opposing our, our policy on GMO, because only GMO is going to level the field between us and Uganda. As long as we continue to oppose GMO, we, we should not complain about Uganda. Because Uganda, every centimeter of Uganda is arable. And so the cost of production is much lower. And that speaks also to the question of sugar. 
We have got three, four, five sugar companies here. There are 17 Mr. Chairman sugar companies in, in Uganda. So unless we look at the issue of efficiency, the issue of competitiveness, the issue of the cost of production, then we are not going to, to, to help ourselves much. Egypt is another major problem, and let me not call it a problem, but challenge, because it is clear that Egyptian companies are much more uh, efficient, they are cost efficient than us. So, but also, um, uh, something we need to examine is about uh, the subsidy level, and that is something that I'm, I'm saying to whether uh, actually Egypt is subsidizing its, its, its exporters. But if it's clear, April for April with Egypt. Chair, my commitment to this house, if I'm approved, I want the complaints to be from Egypt that these Kenyans are too much. Now it is the other way around. We are within the same trading block, but it is Kenyans who complain this Egypt is, is, is too much. So, part of that, one of the major drivers, other than taxation, to this competitiveness is, of course, is cost of power. And I was hoping that uh, I was watching my colleague, Honorable Chilchil, uh, address this issue of the cost of power. One of the things that uh, I am going to have a discussion if, uh, with the Minister for Energy, if I'm approved, is really to take advantage of the night tariff for our manufacturers. Because this power is from, most of it now is from Geothermo. There's nothing like switching off Geothermo because it's right. So we are going to sit down with the Ministry of Energy and encourage our manufacturers to take advantage of night tariff. And I'm going to sit down and insist that night tariff has to be, there has to be a market differential between day tariff and night tariff. It must be significant and it must be attractive to people, to manufacturers, to be able to, one, they manufacture at night. So even things like traffic jams and all that are going to be a thing of the past. Two, it's part of growing our 24-hour economy. Three, it's part of also rationalizing our, our energy use because even if we don't use this energy, people are sleeping. So I don't see why we can't have all our factories uh, working on, uh, on 24 24 hour shift. Uh, I think I've addressed most of the questions by Honorable Missy, uh, Honorable Mary Masse, and also about uh, alternative product. I look forward to working with members of parliament from areas like Busia on the soya beans. Again, why we are complaining about uh, lack of uh, uh, high cost of things like animal feeds is because product inputs that you can grow in the areas like Busia, uh, areas like Okambani and Coast, for such stuff like, uh, like animal feeds, we, we, are, we are not growing. And I think indeed there is existing uh, a very big uh, opportunity. Uh, the Gulf region, yes, uh, uh, Honorable uh, Raso, uh, is a very, very, very big opportunity. We have got a mapping, uh, I intend to introduce a top 50 mapping where we identify uh, countries, uh, 50 top countries 